This is best friend of the show, Monica Cabini, artist and colorist on Batman The Adventures Continue. And you're listening to the DCAU Review, hosted by Cal and Lee, streaming at DCAUReview.com and on your favorite podcast app. Hey, everybody. Welcome to yet another bonus episode of the DCAU Review. I am Liam, and with me as he always is, Cal. Cal, it's a new month, which means we are back with one of our DCAU tie-in book uh, recaps and, and discussions here in our bonus episode. And in fact, this week we are talking about Justice League Infinity number six. We are almost at the end here. One more issue to go. But uh, before we get to the last issue, we, of course, must discuss this penultimate chapter of Justice League Infinity. Oh, I love the use of the word penultimate. So good. Uh, Yes, uh, we are. We are fast approaching the end of this amazing run here and uh, excited to look into it this week as we uncover just who is behind the multiversal fractions that are fractures that begin to happen and uh, that we're experiencing here. So uh, very, very, very excited to get in depth with you this week and uh, discuss everything here as we, uh, we, yeah, we are headed. Thankfully the, uh, the comic book gods, uh, lowercase G here smiled down on us. And uh, there was only one release this week with, uh, with Batman, the adventures continue being pushed back. So we'll have, uh, we'll have another bonus episode next week, but uh, we, we didn't have to, didn't have to do three podcasts this week. So uh, it's right. a good week. It's didn't, a good have to, didn't have to cram last minute anymore. Last minute got moved to tomorrow. But, uh... <laughs> But yes, that is right. We are we have our Justice League Infinity breakdown to do this week, and uh, I think we usually this should be implied if you're if you're listening to a review of this comic. But there will be spoilers, and there is actually a lot of stuff to spoil uh, here. So if you have not yet read this, uh, please hit pause and go uh, go support your local comic book store or uh, or purchase it digitally if you prefer, and uh, and go give this a read before you uh, you listen to us because we're kind of going to jump right into. Uh, the big stuff here, because from a plot standpoint, Cal, this is uh, this is the major reveal issue. This is what we've kind of been building towards for these last few issues. What you know, we we have established that Amazo has sort of been hearing this voice calling out to him, telling him that he needed to break beyond this uh, dimensional mirror to sort of free this being, and that with that being's freedom, Amazo would sort of finally realize his own purpose that he's been in search for since that first episode of uh, Justice League that he appeared in. And of course, as we left, last left our heroes, we had uh, Superman and Wonder Woman along with the Justice League of Earth D uh, f- kind of happening upon the, uh, the main Earth's Justice League who had been sort of decimated along with Amazo himself. And uh, we kind of find out what happened here very quickly as uh, as john stewart gives a uh, sort of a recap he's our narrator for this issue as we've talked about each ep- uh, issue has had its own uh, narrator sort of giving us uh, giving us their their thoughts throughout the issue and and here we have john stewart in the driver's seat as, as he explains that the, the justice league tried to uh, to stop uh try to stop amazo from breaking the wall as uh, you know tried to appeal to him that this havoc that he's creating is not worth it. Uh, however, uh, before they could really, uh, they could uh, find a way to stop him over man. The, uh, the Nazi Superman sees an opening for him to sort of take revenge against this justice league that defeated him. And he, in fact, not bursts, not only through a but in fact, wrecks the, uh, the mirror dimension uh, itself and cracks it open where we get at least one of our, our reveals of uh, who this mysterious voice is, perhaps the person or being that's been behind it this entire time. And that is in fact, Amazo, but not the Amazo, a different alternate dark universe sort of version of him. Uh, and as we find out through the issue, it's, it's not just Amazo, but it is sort of an evil, uh, an evil version of Amazo, who unfortunately for the Justice League is just as powerful as the uh, the Amazo that we know, if not more so. 
He's a bit of an amalgamation, if you will, of mm-hmm. uh, of, a, of a few different items. As we learn that the uh, the aforementioned and uh, last heard, I believe, in the fourth issue of this series, the anti life equation. So, in this existence of Amazo, he murdered everybody on Earth because they hated him, <laughs> and then pr- he proceeded to move from planet to planet, uh, destroying and murdering everybody in his path until he got to apocalypse where he reached a dark side that was actually uh sort of more like the uh the new gods uh, all father and uh he was sort of on the good side of things he had the all father staff and he had hidden away the anti-life equation uh hoping to never have to use it but then unleashed it on amazo in an attempt to to overcome him the amazo unfortunately absorbed the anti-life equation and then continued to decimate uh, the rest of apocalypse and the rest of the the life in that galaxy and now sort of had this unquenchable thirst to continue to just destroy any and everything. So he sort of tricked and and figured out that in order to get to the other dimensions, he found his way to this room that was blocked uh, by the mirrored glass. And he felt his uh, what he refers to as his brother Amazo on the other side. Speaking of amalgam, uh, <laughs> that's a that's a <laughs> '90s comic reference. If you're sitting at home listening to this, you might get that. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, he felt his brother on the other side, and he had to figure out a way to get him to break through the glass. So uh, he's very insulting towards our universe as Amazo, calling him very gullible, and uh, sort of takes advantages advantage of his naivete and uh, in order to do that he needed to reach out to him and uh, in order to break through and by breaking through he's able to again he's causing all this disruption amongst all the the universes uh, uh, unfortunately in the, in the process and now that he's broken through he's he's uh, literally hell-bent on deciding to to kill uh, all the life that stands in its way and wouldn't you know uh, bringing along a Nazi Superman sort of backfires on the uh, the Justice League as Overman also aligns himself with <laughs> with this evil Amazo or Amazo 2, I believe, as he is uh, sometimes referred to in the text. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the Justice League and and uh, from from all multiple dimensions, including uh, the Justice League from Earth D sort of unite with our Justice League and attempt to overcome the uh, the the evil Amazo. But uh, very quickly, uh, losses start happening, including uh, seeing our Superman killed. <laughs> we see uh, we see Earth D's Batman, who was known as, uh, interestingly enough, Terrence Wayne. Right. Uh, Liam, Liam, you posed the question to me earlier today. Uh, do you think that uh, that Superman or that that Batman went by uh, Terry, perhaps? Yeah, I'd be curious to know who that guy's uh, parents were. Um, yeah. Uh, spoiler alert but uh yeah i, I think that's uh, there's that I mean, there are very few coincidences in uh in dc comics as, as we all know in comics in general so yeah I, I when i heard when i saw that uh this particular wayne was named terry or terrence as he's referred to i was like well that can't just be there to be there that has to be a uh, of course a batman beyond reference so uh yeah he's flying nice. the world back too, as we will talk yeah, about mentioned, i believe that his uh his spine was broken by the joker uh we get a little bit of expository dialogue from uh, the earth d superman after he sees him die and tells him that even after you know his spine was severed he he continued to fight crime so i guess that that really bad also is like how he he gets around everywhere so it's also it's like his uh, his battle weird like that big gold uh like rocket sled that professor x had in the 90s x-men <laughs> cartoon uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, that's his version of this uh, lots of marvel references and we're not done yet because uh yeah as you mentioned the uh the the overman the nazi superman sort of asking as the herald here of uh of amazo 2 and and confronts and, and helps destroy some of the justice league and uh and then is sort of finally silenced by the earth d superman but uh despite everyone <laughs> In a, in a great panel, by the way, that we'll talk yes. about in a second. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, as as we established last issue, uh, Earth D Superman uh, very much relishes the chance to punch a Nazi, even in uh, in these moments. But uh, but yes, as uh, as the the battle sort of continues to unfold, the league begins to lose, and 
And we get a pretty, uh, there's no blood, but there's a pretty uh, gruesome death of Shaira specifically. Um, and uh, as we come to find out uh, a few pages later, uh, all of the leaguers are actually still alive. And this was sort of uh, the, the Amazo 2 sort of toying with them by showing them this, this deep, dark nightmare. As mentioned, he's, he's mixed with or combined with the anti-life equation. And it sort of created this very sadistic side in him, wanting to make them see the, these terrible things and this, feel this terrible loss. But it's actually twofold. As, uh, as John Stewart's uh, uh, narration lets us know, because not only does John experience the, the heartbreak and the sadness of seeing Shaira, you know, his, one of his great loves, uh, die in, in, in his arms, but Vixen is sort of, it's made very clear that Vixen sees that in his heart of hearts, if there's one woman that he loves, it's Shaira and not her. So there's like, it's a double edged of not only is John experiencing this tremendous pain, but it's also Vixen seeing John in such pain over another woman is also sort of creating this like auxiliary pain. It's very, it's a very uh, like a good double-edged uh, plan, sadistic plan by the, by our villain here. But uh, yeah, from there it's, it's sort of established that this was all sort of a hallucination that he, he uh, put them through just to sort of toy with them and, and uh, Jean, the two Martian Manhunters try to sort of break everyone out of it, but they're still sort of paralyzed and unable to move. Uh, our Amazo sort of reappears and tries to reason with, uh, with the evil Amazo, but, uh, but it's not to be as he sort of blinks the, the good Amazo out of, uh, out of existence. And we are left on our last page with a, a promise from Amazo to the evil Amazo that he will unleash anti-life on all of creation. So that's where we leave us ourselves from a story standpoint. Now we'll get to our theorizing and our, our ideas about what, uh, what could be coming in, in our final issue in a little bit here. But uh, we of course have to, we would be remiss not to uh, spend a, quite a bit of time because this is such a visual issue. Like we, we kind of talked about, with the exception of the backstory of the evil Amazo, it's essentially kind of this one big fight and, and kind of it's all in this one location. But because of that, it is a very visually stunning issue as, uh, as perhaps be uh, uh, expected. But not only do we have this interesting script from J.M. DeMatteis and James Tucker, as the writers, we of course have Ethan Beaver's uh, as the artist, as the penciler and inker, and uh, Nick Filardi doing colors, as well as uh, DC Hopkins doing letters. So, uh, yeah, it is a, for whatever this might lack, as far as a lot of depth in the in the story department, uh, uh, like we said, lots of exposition about Amazo. Maybe it's not the most uh, interesting beat, beat there, beat for beat there in the story. Boy, is it made up for with just a, a smorgasbord of a very sort of classic, uh, like, you know, crisis on infinite earths level, like just sp spreads and spreads of incredible superhero action on display here. Yeah, we get, I mean, we get multiple pages, like full pages, splash pages of, and we've talked about that a lot through the visuals uh, throughout this mm -hmm. entire series, but multiple full panel pages uh, of just some gorgeous artwork, especially uh, the first, the first uh, sort of the opening sequence is as John Stewart is retelling the tale and we get some, uh, some great Nick Filardi. He, colors the entire thing in, in different shades of green, uh, which of course is, is done purposefully as the, as the character is, is, is retelling this story. But uh, I like that. It's sort of the idea that, you know, Batman, the animated series, when they would do a flashback, they would usually do it in those, uh, sepia tones. So giving you a differentiation between, you know, the modern, what was happening in, in mm -hmm. modern timeline versus the flashback. Uh, it's something to differentiate that. So the fact that he went a little bit different instead of just using, you know, a, a standard color palette with maybe just some duller colors or 
even doing a black and white type look, having that that green hue over all these giant splash pages of, uh, you know, these fractured, again, these fractured sequences and the panels are broken up uh, with these, what looks like uh, it, it's energy or fire or, uh, you know, the pieces of the mirror that are that are breaking apart or beginning to fracture even further. Uh, really, I think it's the fire probably leaking through from Amazo 2's uh, dimension into into the dimension through the through the pieces of the fractured mirrors, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and with all these splash pages, you know, it, even there's more storytelling. You get a lot of backstory, both the, the origin of, of, of Mezo 2 is also sort of interspliced in there after the reveal. And that is actually done in the more traditional sepia tone with a little bit of like orange undercurrent. So I think the colors uh, that, that Nick Flaherty went with in these are unique. I love the choices. They continue to do these, these panel breakups. Also Ethan Beaver's so unique. We talked about a couple of weeks ago when he went with like the Kirby, dark side esque breakups between the, the different panels and that, that dark side heavy uh, issue. This one, you have these, you know, fiery panels that are broken up by the, the flames of that, I guess are leaking through from that dimension with Amazo too. Um, and then I really am curious and interested in the actual design of Amazo too, because I feel like there's a lot of influences from various different, uh, different, characters both from this universe and as you mentioned perhaps from uh, a competing company's universe as well that we uh, <laughs> we sort of mentioned before we went on the air yeah well even just like the the coloration on his costume is is, is kind of reminiscent of, of one of the the versions of ultron uh from from the comics which of course we're talking to and it's funny enough because the the recent uh what if show uh that marvel produced for disney plus actually featured a dimension hopping version of Ultron sort of a, you know, that, uh, that required a bunch of uh, heroes from different universes coming together to fight him. So it's kind of a funny bit of a happenstance there, but yeah, the design as well, it's even funny from the first time we see him when he sort of first breaks through, he very much looks like our Amazo, just a little, maybe a bit more armored up has kind of these spiky shoulders, but then when it's sort of revealed again, and there is some dialogue from uh, from the, the John Stewart narration saying that he had sort of evolved, continued to evolve and was altering its form. But this form that he takes, it's not only does he, he has sort of the, the venom tongue that we see, but, but with like a, a spiky version of that. Uh, so he has sort of has that, you know, the vicious like teeth mask, the uh, teeth and the, and, the, and the mouth kind of like a, a carnage or something. But there's also uh, uh, what appear to be remnants of other classic DC characters, uh, specifically Trigon in this case. Because you have not only do you have the devil horns, he has two sets of horns, but uh, he also has uh, four eyes, which of course was a was a was the sign of uh, of Trigon. Sort of a, either when uh, when the character of Raven was sort of channeling her her darker side, she would uh, suddenly have the four red eyes, or or when Trigon himself sort of appeared. So I, I, I wondered if, if they were sort of homaging that at all, or if, if perhaps there's uh, you know, other evils that this, this anti-life equation Amazo is able to draw on. And, uh, you know, and, and that's, that's part of it as well. And, and maybe there's even a little bit, maybe, maybe the tongue and stuff comes more from, you know, from the hate that sort of more monstrous Hades design that we saw in, in the Justice League episode. And then, again earlier in this series so it does feel like we're pulling from not only uh, other comic book universes but at least a couple of our uh, you know our own dc characters and even the dcau versions of them so uh, that is a it's a very very striking design that you know the very last page of the entire uh, the entire issue as i said this uh, this sweeping declaration that amazo makes that uh, that he's going to unleash anti-life on all on all of creation it's a, it's a it's just an incredible spread of it looks like maybe he has a, he's sort of taken some of the the more fearsome elements of of these different characters he has this this toothy mouth it's sort of every part of him is sort of expelling this green fiery energy as you talked about and then sort of behind that energy you see like the red sort of bleeding of the universe and you know red skies are often sort of a 
uh, an element of various DC crisis books. So you kind of see that, that uh, the universe bleeding behind him as you, as you see all of the heroes sort of floating, sort of suspended in place, unable to move as he, as he's sort of unleashing his powers. So yeah, the design is fascinating. And then just sort of the way they, they visualize when you have a character like this, who is all powerful is even more powerful than the Amazo that we know who can do everything. Uh, it's, it can be, I'm sure it's a little daunting of a task to, uh, to imagine visualizing that, but not only the sort of the haunting sort of gruesome monstrous design, but then sort of the visualization of his powers by Ethan Beavers. And of course, by Nick Filardi on, on the colors, I think, especially there's uh, there's just some really striking stuff. Yeah. It looks like they had a lot of fun doing that. And I know that uh, just from, uh, from Mr. Filardi's Twitter and, and from Ethan Beavers on his Instagram, just they're, they're having a lot of fun and being able to work in this world and certainly work on this project mm-hmm. and kind of having a lot of freedom to bring the visuals that, that they, they can imagine from the store, from the story to life. So uh, yeah, this, it, it continues to kind of show throughout here. So this character, that's clearly sort of a, a brand new take on the, the justice league version of the, the Ivo Android known as Amazo is uh, is pretty awesome. They got to kind of flex their creative muscle and just what that what that looked like. Whether or not uh, you know the the writers Jam Dave Mateus and and Mister Mister James Tucker had anything to uh, any influence at all, you know we're not quite sure. But it, bringing it to life certainly was was done by uh, the, the two gentlemen on the art that continue to have have lots of fun. And uh, there's even you know just solo panels. Even when we get back to our standard breakdown of like a you know a normal six or or nine panel uh layout here there's some some great individual panels throughout the fight you know there's a there's a particular overman uh shot where he's uh he's sort of just expressing uh, as just before he gets his uh his teeth knocked out literally teeth knocked out uh by earth d superman uh there's a there's a shot of him with his eyes completely red there's this this subtle uh slight hue of red on one side of his face and he's clearly expressing this this uh, bit of hatred and then the next page that you get is this half splash page of superman uh from earth d knocking his teeth out and giving him uh you know telling him to please shut the hell up (laughs) which is so so great um but then even further on we get it you know we get a panel as as john witnesses shaira's as you mentioned her gruesome death of her wings getting ripped off um, you know, there's a there's a shot of John, of of John Stewart there, just yes. in disbelief, calling out. You can hear you can hear Phil Lamar screaming that line. Uh, you know, if if you're if you're reading this, and just the expression on his face of terror and sadness and disbelief, like all encapsulated in that. Yeah, that though I was gonna. I'm glad you mentioned that. I was gonna I was gonna bring that up, and then kind of forgotten, but. Yeah, that that from the shot of him first sort of seeing her die to uh, that shot of him very much in the, you know, kind of the, the Superman, Supergirl classic Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, cover by George Perez, he, you know, sort of cradling her in her arms. And then again, that these three, it's just these three quick panels in succession here of we see Vixen sort of floating down and, and John is looking down. And then you see him look up with a with a tear in his eye towards Vixen, and you just see this this look of of just confusion and sadness on Vixen's face as well. And that's one of the things we've talked about is is the way that you know Ethan Beavers has has taken this DCAU style, this Bruce Tim style, and uh, and really added. And maybe the element that I think he sort of added his own unique flavor is just the the really added emphasis on, on these, these reaction shots that we get throughout these six issues that, you know, you really feel the emotion that the character is feeling. And, you know, it isn't, it isn't the same uh, panel to panel, as you said, it's sort of that initial shock and, and horror that he feels that just gives way to this deep grief and sadness. And, and, and then sort of, again, that, you know, I, I, that, that one panel of Vixen as she sort of realizes, you know, along with, along with John that, that he truly only at the end of the day will, will ever really truly love Shaira. The, 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 the deep, 
you know, grief on his face and the sort of confusion and sadness on hers just really stood out to me. And just the, the, the overall expressive nature of so many shots, you know, as, as you already mentioned, the, the overman and, and earth, the Superman interactions as well as, as well as the, uh, the two Martian manhunters sort of trying to fight, uh, fight off the, the mind control that they're, they're dealing with as well. There's so many great sort of expressive faces that are, that are really just add and really make you feel <laughs> what, what the characters are feeling. Yeah. It's, it's uh, again, I, you know, it's, it's a testament to uh, Mr. Beaver's ability to, you take a two day, two D image and you uh, you're able to express emotion through that, you know, without any, any vocals, without with it, just literally words and images on a paper. And you can feel the emotion that, that these characters are, are experiencing whether it's through the sadness or the loss or uh you know being fed up with hearing a a nazi taunt you for (laughs) for you know several (laughs) panels worth of materials so um or just like the dripping of evil like that's coming off of this giant creature here who uh, at the culmination of the of the issue as as both martian man hunter martian men hunter i think is what we determined was the plural so. <laughs> the plural of that uh both martian men hunter are uh you know are are determining that this is not uh, fact- actually happening it's a figment of their imaginations uh you know there's a sadistic grin that that he gets on that Amazo two gets on his face talking about how he enjoys the torture uh, that he's going to bring them by this impossible odds that feeds their souls and how uh, then that, that final page reveal of him uh, after he's seemingly, again, we're unsure, seemingly destroyed our universe's Omezo, uh, just him sort of standing above all of the uh, the Justice League as they're sort of all suspended in animation, swirling around him, and uh, him with this beautiful Kirby crackle behind him with this swirling, uh, swirling fire mixed in with it, and uh, him declaring that he's going to unleash the anti-life uh, on all of creation. Uh, what a way to end that. Uh, end that issue and, and kind of leave you hanging. So, uh, yeah, uh, great visuals, amazing, amazing artwork this week. I think that the 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 decision to go with so many splash pages. We talked about this before, uh, you know, when we we started seeing this as as the theme throughout the books. But it, in some ways, that can uh, you know inhibit you because you have limited space at that point to tell the story. But I feel like for this is issue specifically. Uh, man, what a great job that uh, that you, you of using them to really make the stakes feel really high in these in these scenes and really make this battle seem larger than life and and the impact that's going on and the the war going on around them make it really feel uh, like like the stakes are are pretty high here. Yeah, absolutely, and and I mean you and this is I think one of the the most fun parts of this is. You know, we've seen time travel in in the original show. We saw, you know, we saw time travel. We saw multiple alien invasions of different kind, and 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 you know, big bads for the league to fight, and you know, and Lex and Brainiac and, and Dark Side and some of those, you know, these these really big bads. And it's just interesting and fun to see something that feels really on its own. It's completely on its own level. And uh, it feels like it is new ground. We aren't just kind of going back to this world and kind of retreading old stuff to see them have to face a foe that is so different and so unique and, uh, and, and, but still feeling completely authentic to something, to a, a bad guy that could have appeared, you know, maybe if we had gotten one more season of the show uh, back in the day. So I, I really think that, you know, between the, the writing of, uh, of Mr. DeMatteis and Mr. Tucker, and then the, the incredible art from, uh, from Ethan Beavers and Nick Filardi. It really does create a, a really uh, exciting and kind of, you know, you're, you're really dreading, it really does kind of begin to make the wheels turn of how, how could they possibly stop a guy or, uh, or a being with, uh, with this type of power, you know, that could, you know, that can wipe them all out with the thought as, uh, as John said, which uh, I guess will bring us Cal into our, our final little bit of this, uh, this here bonus episode, which is of course is our, our patented ba- baseless speculation. But I guess uh, that is one question we have, and we've certainly discussed off the air. Uh, is there, are, do we feel like there are any more reveals coming or, or is it just going to be some sort of all out battle in, in this final issue? 
I, I don't know because the first time I read the, I, the first, well, clearly we don't know because it's the speculation part of the episode, <laughs> but you know, it's hard. I think it's hard to tell. And it's interesting because both you and I read it yesterday or this week when it came out, uh, because of course this is live every time anybody presses play, but uh, we read it when it came, <laughs> when it came out and uh, you seem to have a, a bit of a more uh, solid understanding that, Hey, this is the final reveal. This is the bad guy. Uh, you know, he is, it's a meso to it as the anti-life equation. And that's what the culmination is. I was a little less solid on that. I think based on simply, it feels like that those two panels where the, the Martian men hunter are declaring that this isn't real and yes, we get uh, an explanation from Amazo to uh, again saying that he's just toying with them and that he the reason why this whole fantasy situation happened of all these deaths uh, was so that he could toy with them. But then the 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 narration that's occurring from John continues and he says, we've been floating there the whole time, paralyzed, helpless. But if it was an all an illusion, as John had said, then why did the pain, the loss, the heartbreak, and heartbreak is emboldened, feel so unbearably real? And that also was em- was is emboldened. Um, so or boldened. I don't know if, what the proper term is there, but <laughs> so that. And then we have our we have the the title or the you know the the teaser for next month's final issue is what dreams may come. So. I don't know you think about characters who are able to facilitate a dream sequence uh, that feels real illusions uh, with the jet. When it comes to the justice league, one character that sticks out would be a Dr. Destiny. Is this all a figment of their imagination that's being caused? Are we going to get the dream sequence reveal for the final issue that would make this feel a little bit cheap. I feel like the more that you think about it, Mm -hmm. you know, we've, we, uh, you know, there there are a couple of those episodes in, in Batman, the animated series is run uh, that are revealed to be a dream sequence at the end. And while they're both universally pretty much loved episodes, once you've watched it or, or you know, watched it one time, it sort of takes away the surprise at the end. So, you know, is this... Is, by doing that, it kind of takes away your your reason to reread these comics at that point because you kind of know the you kind of other than the visual aspect of it, you kind of know the story at that point. There's you know that mm-hmm. that uh, multi multi use or you know multi time reading it through the series maybe is taken taken down a notch a little bit. So I don't know. I I'll say just because you know it that that thing was left hanging and sure I, I i'd love to look like a genius and i'll just say <laughs> yeah maybe this will this is going to be revealed as of of fantasy that's being played out uh by you know controlled by dr destiny that has created this and they're all it's going to be revealed that none of this multiversal crossover stuff exists <laughs> what about you yeah, I, I I honestly had not thought about it that way until you uh, you had brought that up to me. I, I do love it as just one of those really out there take a swing at a at, predi- at a prediction. That's a, it's a brave prediction, and I love it for that. Um, yeah, I do think there has to be something that counteracts both this Amazo's incredible power and the anti life equation, and we see Amazo disappear. At, at the end of this issue, but you have to assume he's the one that's not actually dead. So I, I you do have to feel like Amazo has to go find something that can help turn the tide and either defeat it, defeat this evil Amazo entirely, or at the very least make it vulnerable so that the Justice League can actually fight the 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 thing. So I do wonder like what what like Deus Ex Machina uh, device or what you know previous artifact they could they could potentially bring out of the uh, the toy chest and and bring back from either a previous Justice League episode or or from somewhere deep in the DC Comics lore. I have I did have the thought of maybe you know in our universe we know that Lex Luthor found the Anti Life Equation and that he and Darkseid both held on to it and then disappeared never to be seen again. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what I, speaking of something coming out of left field, if Lex and or dark side just showed up 
out of nowhere to uh to attack or to to fight the uh the evil amazo here in episode in issue seven that might again feel like a little bit jarring a little bit uh a little bit out of the <laughs> field so but i but i do feel like it's got to be something with amazo has to go and find something that he can use to uh to counteract the uh or find some way there is there's sort of a moment where he tries to appeal to it to uh to the evil amazo rationally and it seems to work for a second but that uh at a certain point that the the amazo and the the anti-life equation are just kind of too bonded so there has to be a, some device or some ability that amazo has to learn of how to like i think has to at least separate amaz the the evil the evil android or former android from uh from this anti-life equation and then uh i don't know what we would do from there because we still establish that the anti-life equation itself is quite formidable on its own as we saw when it uh nearly killed wonder woman a few issues ago but perhaps at least separated they could be contained so yeah i do think obviously since he's been sort of uh, lurking in in the background and the in the prologues and epilogues of each issue before finally taking center stage here i feel like uh, our yeah dcau prime uh amazo has to be the key here and has to pull something some sort of rabbit out of the hat to uh to stop uh, the evil amazo but what that could be exactly uh that's that's maybe something we'd like to hear some feedback on as as we begin to wrap it up here i'd like to uh we definitely like to hear from you at dcau review you can comment on our instagram posts or of course uh, tweet us also at dcau review let us know what you think do you have any big theories for this final issue is it going to be another big bad pulling all of the strings could there be you know, another character from the DCAU's past coming back to help. Uh, will we see like the entire JLU roster come in and maybe try to save the day with just sheer numbers? There's a lot of things that could happen here. Um, is there some sort of uh, is there some sort of obvious thing we're forgetting that will that will come back from one of the previous issues and then be the the evil Amazo's ultimate undoing? We want to hear from you. Uh, definitely hit us up at DCAU Review on the socials but uh yeah cal another exciting issue and uh i am very much looking forward to the final issue uh which will be coming our way in january yeah it's right around the corner here and uh i i will say that uh this week uh co-writer on the the project mr jm de Mateus, who of course has done uh other other work on the dcau including several episodes of justice league and, and justice league unlimited or justice league unlimited specifically but uh he did tweet out that he had just given they had just given the final approval i think for the final or had gotten the final approval for mm -hmm. the final issue and uh, he expressed gratitude for being able to work on this series and he did mention in his tweet that he hoped that they would be able to continue to work on more issues of yes. it. So uh, we love seeing that the creators of this want to do more stuff. Uh, they've had fun doing it. Uh, as I mentioned, I think just, just from observation on, on Twitter, both uh, Nick Filardi and, uh, and Ethan Beavers, who doesn't have Twitter, but has an Instagram, both of them have, have been, seemingly extremely happy and excited to work on, on this project as well. And, um, you know, obviously James Tucker got a kick out of doing the, uh, the very controversial cover, uh, featuring Wonder Woman and, and, uh, and dark side making out. So we know that he's at least had fun at, at some points throughout this. I don't know what his availability is going to look like with him being involved with the, the uh the the new batman animated series so mm -hmm. uh, perhaps it'll just be mr damateus moving forward or, or perhaps we'll get other uh previous contributors to the dcau moving forward but either way we still have one exciting issue left to go and i'm excited to cover that with you next month liam absolutely well thank you everyone again for listening like we said we want to hear your feedback and uh, if you listen to us whether you do so on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify or if you're listening slash watching on the Pod Tower YouTube channel, uh, we appreciate it. Whatever uh, site you are listening to us on, that site has the ability to, to leave us feedback. 
uh, definitely you can leave a comment or uh, if you can leave us a review, give us five stars. If you can click like on the, uh, on the YouTube video, all that stuff helps us, gets us uh, a little bit further up in those search results and the algorithms and stuff. So any, anything you can do there can help us out. And we appreciate your time listening. Uh, definitely looking forward to one more issue of Justice League Infinity. And of course, we'll have our regular episodes every Saturday, as well as next week, uh, we will have another bonus episode coming your way as we look at two Batman The Adventures Continues stories, both with the final issue of season two of Batman The Adventures Continue, plus a holiday story in the DC uh, holiday special one shot that's coming out. So lots of great content from comic books and, of course, the cartoons that we uh, review every Saturday to look forward to coming up soon. But until then, I'm Liam. And I'm Cal. And we'll be back soon with another episode of the DCAU Review. Bye-bye.